Imagine if what you thought about yourself was reflected in your physical appearance. Would you look like an angel or a monster? Hello everyone and welcome back to Always Watching. Today we are discussing The Substance, the nastiest and funniest movie of the year. Briefly, The Substance follows Elizabeth Sparkle, a star whose shine is fading. Amid a midlife crisis, she decides to try a mysterious substance which promises to transform her into a version of herself she never thought possible. What unfolds is a devastating take on beauty standards and how it leaves us dead on the inside. We are first introduced to Elizabeth as a fitness instructor on a failing TV show. Elizabeth has experienced the best and worst of what fame and money has to offer, and now she's left wondering if the highs were worth the lows. Despite her fame, her age has made it impossible for her to continue on the same trajectory that she's on now. Rather than reinvent, she tries to brainstorm methods to relive the glory of her youth. Following a hospital visit after a brutal car crash, she comes across something called the substance. The substance is a drug that promises to transform you into a younger, more beautiful version of yourself. The slow split between Elizabeth and Sue really speaks to how Elizabeth has become dependent on her physical appearance to be seen and acknowledged. Before we meet Sue, we have the misfortune of following Elizabeth around. We are first introduced to Elizabeth through her Hollywood Walk of Fame. This perfectly showcased her rise and fall. In the beginning, people want to take pictures with her star, but after some time, they start to forget what movies that she's in. and. As more time passes, she becomes invisible. People don't even bother to stop and acknowledge her. And there's such a massive disconnect between the real Elizabeth and this famous Elizabeth. Every day at work, she walks past these giant photos of herself at different stages in her life. And she keeps her head down and she tries her best to avert their gaze. Her inability to look at herself is later reflected in her relationship with Sue and why she can't really see them as one. When she's not shooting, she spends her time alone. She's always wearing these baggy suits, this trench coat, these sunglasses, and she always seems super surprised when people notice her. It's as if she's walking around invisible. Her apartment is a soulless space. It feels cold and uninviting. Her bathroom feels like the set of a Saw movie and the lighting is totally unforgivable. It makes it impossible for her not to notice every little imperfection. What's worse is that this entire apartment revolves around this giant picture, this shrine, and the picture is placed behind her almost like a shadow, representing everything she was and no longer is. Her looks have always been the most important part of her life, and this can be seen in the size of these photographs. And the substance is basically a last ditch attempt to relive that glory and that attention she had when she was younger. I love how the substance is administered like heroin. Like she is so desperate to get any type of hit. Like she will do anything to feel that type of love again. When Sue is born, the split between Elizabeth's dual identities gets worse. At first, Sue and Elizabeth do actually feel like one. Sue never actually takes any interest in Elizabeth's life, however, she does take care of her and she does switch once these seven days are up. However, her attitude towards Elizabeth starts to change the more exposed she becomes to Hollywood and the more addicted she becomes to fame. Eventually, these seven days start to feel too fast for Sue and un bearable for Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is not a bad person. However, what comes out of her is a total monster. And I think it really speaks to how beauty can be a blessing and a curse. The whole idea of respecting the balance, I think really speaks to what can happen if you overindulge. She took the substance as a way of escaping from herself, maybe taking a break. Instead, she becomes trapped in her own vanity. I think being pretty can open doors. Pretty privilege is definitely a real thing. However, I think the pressure on women to maintain these beauty standards that are largely out of our control is a way of keeping women at the mercy of men. We can control our health, but we can't really control our physical appearance, and we certainly cannot control aging. And I thought Dennis Quaid's character perfectly represented that. This man is thriving 
and he thrives by feeding off beautiful young women. Sue offers Elizabeth a rare opportunity to do things differently. However, Elizabeth is not interested in doing things differently. She wants to relive the glory of her youth again and again and again and again. She wants to be trapped in an echo chamber of applause. Sue, like Elizabeth, follows the same trajectory. They are the same person. She becomes famous for her looks. I don't think she was all that talented. Those dance moves were pretty basic. The music was catchy but forgettable. And besides her looks, she really has nothing else to offer. She, she pretty much lacks substance. And I felt like in so many ways, Sue's misuse of the substance represents Elizabeth's misuse of her fame and beauty. Elizabeth has allowed herself to be used as a piece of meat to be devoured by everyone around her. And the more famous Sue becomes, the less she starts to care about Elizabeth's well-being and in turn her own well-being. I thought it was very telling how they never support each other. From the beginning, they don't see each other as one. There are no positive affirmations. Elizabeth spends her time hate watching Sue and trashing the apartment and Sue spends her time pretending like Elizabeth doesn't exist. I thought the inability for Elizabeth to escape Sue's gaze is played out perfectly through these giant photographs. Elizabeth has done a great job so far of avoiding her own gaze. She hasn't really been able to look at herself truly for who she is. And Sue's presence like forces her to really take a good long look at herself. Unlike Elizabeth, Sue has no problems staring into her reflection. She rearranges the entire apartment around this giant billboard. And the more famous Sue becomes, the harder she works to erase all traces of Elizabeth from her life. She puts all her things into these boxes, cruelly labeled old junk, and hides Elizabeth in a wall in the bathroom. And I really like how this tension between them starts to seep in to Sue's time. She starts to have these nightmares about Elizabeth's imperfections rubbing off on her. And Elizabeth is not really that annoyed by Sue's success. What she's annoyed by is that Sue will not give her credit for her beauty. And even as Sue starts to steal more and more time away from Elizabeth, Elizabeth refuses to end this experience. And I think the reason for that is Elizabeth feels like she has nothing left to offer. Like Sue, she has spent her life connecting with people on a superficial level. And when she tries to go out of her way and make a meaningful human connection, she can't really follow through on it. And I thought that whole scene with her childhood classmate was sad because the only reason she reaches out to him is because he called her the most beautiful girl in the world. Like he, he validated her look. And I think Elizabeth has spent her whole life living as this perfect doll. And this is mirrored in the way that Sue behaves. Like everything about Sue just feels like a doll. The way she walks, the way she talks. She's this hollow shell waiting for people to give it life. She does an excellent job of mirroring what people want from her. She does exactly what she's told and she's rewarded for it. She never really tries to challenge anyone's perceptions of her. Instead, she tries harder to meet their expectations. And I think a lot of this rage Elizabeth feels towards herself is because she's basically spent her whole life as this perfect doll, doing exactly what she's told. And now it's over. Now she's being asked to leave and she feels like trash. She feels like she's been discarded. She's done such a great job of hiding this rage and this frustration. She doesn't talk back to her raggedy boss when he's telling her that she's too old for this industry. Like she does a great job of maintaining her composure and always giving people exactly what they expect from her, even when she's uncomfortable. I think all this pent up frustration and anger and rage comes out when Sue and Elizabeth see each other for the first time. And as soon as Elizabeth dies, Sue's facade starts to slip, slip away her face, her ears, her nails. And what's left is just this hollow shell of a woman. In the end, she runs back to her apartment to misuse the substance one last time. And what comes out is a monster and a monster that doesn't even really know that it's a monster. I think how she feels about herself on the inside is finally mirrored in her outside. Like the inside and the outside finally become one. And she has spent all this time allowing Sue her better half to represent her. And when she leaves the apartment as this monster, she decides to leave the apartment not as Sue, but as Elizabeth. She wants the applause for herself. And I thought it was so ironic that she believed that people would be able to see past her physical appearance and accept 
her for who she really is. Like somehow they'd be able to see the real Elizabeth. The problem is the real Elizabeth is this Frankenstein that has been erected to smile and look pretty. And I really wish she learned this lesson earlier. I mean, what comes out of her is the worst version that we have seen so far. And in so many ways, she ends up manifesting her worst nightmare. And I thought it was very telling how by the end, she couldn't really tell the difference between screams and applause. It was all the same, like attention was attention. She was willing to become the it girl, the center of attention, any means necessary, and she got it. It's not what's on the outside that matters, but what's on the inside. In Elizabeth's case, there's nothing. There's nothing left on the outside and there's nothing left on the inside. In the end, she learns absolutely nothing from the experience. She dies on her walk of fame, truly believing she has restored her place on this earth. Like all she can think about is the applause and the admiration. Like those are her final thoughts as she's bleeding out on this star. I think the problem with physical appearance is that it goes away. Elizabeth has spent her whole life measuring her worth based on her looks. And the minute that went away, she went away, like quite literally. And so overall, I thought this was such an excellent movie. I could watch this again and again. And the messaging is so simple, but it's told so well. And everything that you would criticize this movie for is exactly what makes it phenomenal. And this is probably one of my favorite movies of the year. It's definitely in my top five, if not top two. You guys let me know what you think and until next time.